Welcome back to the John Gets Games playthrough for Foundations of Rome. At this point, we have played through a few turns in the game in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, you can find a link for it down below in the description or by clicking the I up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. That way, if any mistakes are made as we play through the rest of this game, I can then put corrections on the screen and that will make this as accurate as possible. All right, let's now jump into the game. At this point, it is now the green player's turn, although before they take it, I do want to mention that at the end of the tutorial, there were too many cards here in the round one stack. I have subsequently fixed it, so now we are in the correct spot where there are just four more cards left over. Now again, we end the round once all of these cards are bought, but we are certainly closer to the end of round one than it looked like at the end of the tutorial. All right, the green player can now go, and they have decided to construct their second pottery studio right up here. Next up, it is the blue player's turn, and they're going to do the same thing. Neither of these players have any money, so they figure they may as well get these buildings out before they take an income action. All right, it's now our turn, and I think we should purchase a lot. Currently, neither of our opponents have any money, and it's very likely they're about to take income. So I think what we should do is spend two of our money right now so that we can purchase a seven. Now that means we can put this right over here, and then all of these will slide down, so next turn we will have exactly the amount of money to purchase A5, which is pretty close to A7, and we can do that before our opponents can take this, because of course they currently don't have any money. So after we do that, we can draw another card from the top of the deck, and now it's the green player's turn. Now we're not surprised to see them take income, so that's going to be 5 plus 3, or 8 money for them. And then after that, the blue player is also going to take income, so that's 5 plus 2, or 7 money. All right, it's back to us, and just like I talked about last turn, let's spend our final two money in order to pick up the A5 lot. So we can put our ownership token right there, we can then slide all of this down, and the next lot is G6, and now it's time for the green player to go. Well, after looking at their options, they really quite like B3, so they're going to buy that lot, this is going to cost them four of their money, and then they can put this ownership token right over there. Now these will slide down, and there's just one more card here on the stack. And it looks like that's going to come out quickly, considering the blue player is now going to purchase D7. So that is going to cost them three of their money, and now we can have all of this slide down, and the final lot for round one is G8. Well, it's now our turn, and it looks like none of these plots are really going to line up well with any of our current buildings to try and do a big overbuild action, so I think maybe what we should do is construct some bakeries to try and get an income done so that we can purchase more lots before the end of the round. So with that in mind, I think let's just take this bakery and we can put it right over here onto F7. After that, it is the green player's turn, and they're going to buy B4 for just two money, so that is going to put an ownership marker right over here, which is close to quite a few of their owned lots. Moving on, it's the blue player's turn, and they like the look of D6 quite a lot. So they are going to spend two of their money in order to buy that lot. And now these will slide down. All right, it's our turn again, and we have one more bakery. So I figure let's go ahead and put this out here on the map. We'll put it right over there so that next turn we can take income and we will make one more money than we would have otherwise. All right, moving on, the green player has two money and they really like E2. So there has been a lot of cheap lot purchasing, uh, so they can now put their ownership token right up here. And then these will slide down. Next up, it is now the blue player's turn and they're going to build their insulae right over there. So that's going to increase their population by four, which puts them in the lead. Remember, the player with the most population will get four bonus points in the first round scoring, and that is coming up pretty quickly. All right, moving on, it's now our turn, and let's take income. So that's going to be five plus three, or eight money. After that, the green player can go, and they've decided they would like to overbuild with their insulae right over here. Uh, they don't want to go into the scoring round with no population. Now that has given them four population, so they've now tied with us. So things can move on, and the blue player is going to spend two money in order to buy G6. Now that is right over here. And then these will slide down, and we get to go. Now we have eight money, which means we could easily afford both of these. And the options are B6 and G8. 
Now, at the moment, neither one of these are particularly attractive to me, although uh, every single one of the spots in the city is going to be bought by the end of the game. So even though they're not next to anything right now, that does not mean they won't be next to something good in the future. Now, uh, G8 is next to the edge, and B6 is in the middle. So I think let's just go ahead and pay two of our money in order to take B6. Next up, it is the green player's turn, and they've decided to place their other insulae out, and that's going to go right over here. So that's going to overbuild on top of this pottery studio. They can then move one of these ownership tokens right over there and place that onto the board right here. Now that has increased their population by four, which means they have taken the lead. Next up, it's the blue player's turn, and they now realize that there is just no way that they are going to take the population lead back from the green player, so they are going to switch uh, things up a little bit and overbuild their Domus Maximus in order to put an artisan forum into play. Now, they did just lose two population, which means they'll make two less population points at the end of the round, but the artisan forum makes three victory points and two money, so they think this is probably a better thing, although they are less well positioned to vie for population in future scoring rounds, but they figure they'll work on that later. All right, it's our turn, and we're the only ones with money, and I figure let's go ahead and buy this cheap lot. G8 is not particularly great for us, I don't think, but having more lots will be good as we go into the later stages of the game so that we are nice and spread out to take advantage of the next cards that come out on the row. So that has finished out our turn, and now all of us get one more action before we go into the end of round one scoring. So the green player gets to go, and they've decided to simply put a bakery right over there. The blue player is next, and they are going to do a very similar turn right over here. And now we can go for the last action of the round. Now for this, I think let's overbuild right here. I uh, think the G8 was actually quite good for us. I was not seeing this move for us. So that means this pottery studio is going to turn it into an artisan forum. That is going to make one extra coin for us, as well as three more victory points in the end of round scoring. All right, round one is now officially over, so it's time for scoring. Now the first thing we do is residential buildings, and we can see that the green player has the most population, so they get the round one bonus of four points. Now that's going to get added to the eight population they have to give them 12 points total. And then the blue player will get six points, and we are going to get four. Up next, we would score civic buildings, but at this point, nobody has actually built any out into Rome. Now, this is not too surprising considering these buildings score points based off of specific other buildings around them, and right now Rome is pretty spread out. Now, as we go into the middle and later stages of the game, things are going to get much more crowded, and these conditional scoring buildings will make a lot more sense to be built. So we can now move on to commercial building scoring. Now, the way this works is we will get points that are showing on these buildings as well as coins that are showing. So over here, we are going to get four coins total as well as three points. The green player is going to get just two coins and zero points. And then the blue player is going to get, uh, looks like, five coins. And then they are also going to be getting quite a few points. That is going to be three plus four or seven. So we go from four to seven. The blue player goes from 6 up to 13, and the green player does not get any points. Alright, that has finished the first out of three scorings, and unfortunately we are lagging a bit behind our opponents, but a lot can change as we play throughout the rest of the game, so let's now jump into the second round. Well, the first thing that we have to do is draw new cards for the row, so that is going to be all six of these. Alright, it's now time for the green player to go, because we took the last action in the first round. Now, they have decided they're going to start by taking income, which unfortunately for them is only going to be 7 money. Next up, it's the blue player's turn, and they do have 5 money, which could buy some of the cheaper lots, but they have decided they are going to start off by taking income, because that's going to be 5 plus 5, or 10 money. So that means they now have 15 money, which leaves them quite flexible for picking up the lots that they want. All right, we are now up, and we have eight money, which means we could afford most of these plots, and I think what we should probably do is buy this rather expensive one right here. Now, that's because D3 is right there on the map, and that is currently between three of these three size buildings. Now, that is a prime civic building location, so I think we want to reserve it for ourselves. Of course, this is going to cost us six out of our eight money, which I don't love, but either way, I think this is probably the right call for us. So let's slide these down and draw a new one. And now it's the green player's turn. 
Now they've decided they're going to go cheap and only spend two money to buy D2, so they can add their ownership marker right out there. Next up, it is the blue player's turn, and they currently have all of their ownership tokens over here. So they do think that they should probably buy some uh, lots, considering they have lots of money. And they're actually going to go kind of cheap. Uh, they don't desperately want F2, but the uh, plots that they want, they don't really want to spend that much money for. So they figure by spending two money on this, that will make all of these get a little bit cheaper. And considering uh, we don't have much money, and neither does the green player, they feel confident that they'll be able to buy the lots that they want later on. So they can put an ownership token out onto F2. And now it's our turn. So we have two money and B5 is up there for two money. And B5 is actually great for us. It's next to two of our ownership tokens. So I think let's go ahead and buy it. So we can put that right over here. And it's not too surprising to see this big land grab at the start of the round, considering we built so much at the end of the last one. So we can draw the next card and that is D8. And it's now time for the green player to go. Well, when they look at these options, they're feeling pretty happy about being able to spend four of their money to buy D1. Now that's because they already have D2 and having uh, two next to each other in this uh, really uh, congested area is a good thing because that unlocks the ability to either have a couple small civic buildings or one of the two size civic buildings, depending on what they think will make the most sense when they play it. So these will slide down and the next plot is E8. Well, at this point, it's now the blue player's turn, and they are going to spend three of their money to buy E6. After that, the next plot is going to be E7, and now it's our turn. Well, we currently have no money, but we could potentially build one of these pottery studios out onto the board. That would increase our income when we take an income action. But of course, we have to decide, is that worth losing an entire action to potentially maybe just get one money if we might end up just overbuilding that pottery studio anyway? Well, when we look at our options, we would really like to buy A4 because that's next to one of our tokens. And I imagine the green player would also be interested in that uh, plot. Now, they don't have enough money to buy it, and neither do we. And if we spend this turn putting a pottery studio out and the green player takes income, then they would be able to buy it before us. So I think let's just take income right now, which is going to be 5 plus 4, or 9 money. Moving on, it's the green player's turn, and they are not happy about taking income, but they feel like that's probably what they should do right now. So they are going to take 5 plus 2, or 7 more money. Next up, the blue player can go, and they are more than happy to spend three of their money to buy the location C8. So these will slide down, and it looks like there's only a few cards left in the stack. All right, we are next, and we have the funds to be able to afford A4, so let's go ahead and do it. That's going to cost us two of our money, and then we can put this right over there. So these will slide down, and the next card is going to be G1. Moving on, it's now the green player's turn, and they are going to spend two of their money in order to buy G2. After that, we can shift these down, and the next card is going to be A6. Okay, the blue player can go, and they do like D8. They're pretty happy to buy this one for so cheap, so that is going to cost them just one money, and they can put their ownership token right over there. Now, these are all going to slide down, and the last card is revealed, and it's H6. All right, we can now take our turn, and I think we should probably get one of our Domus Maximuses built. I think we should put this one right over here, and that's going to increase our population by two. Now, the reason I want to start working on this is because, obviously, the uh, round two scoring is coming up relatively soon, and the bonus for having the most population in the second round is seven points, and I think I'd like to try and push for that. Well, it's now the green player's turn, and they've decided they're going to spend two of their money to buy E8. Now, this is not an amazing plot for them, but they really did not want the blue player to gain access to that, considering how many of these plots they already have. Now, the green player figures that this might end up being a pretty good civic building spot, or potentially they could also get E7. It kind of depends on if the blue player goes after that, and it seems pretty likely, but either way, the green player feels like that was still a pretty good move for them. So, blue can go, and yeah, it's not surprising. They're going to spend two of their money to buy E7, and put this right over there. So these are going to slide down, and at this point, the A6 is just for money, and I think we've got to buy it. So we can spend this right over here, 
and then we can put our token down there. And that has given us a length four segment into which we can hopefully build this grand insulae before the end of the round. So this will slide down and now the green player can go. And they have decided to overbuild with this grand insulae right over here. So that means this insulae is going to get taken off and then both of these ownership tokens will go back, although one will go right over onto E3 to show that they still control that. Now it looks like they just increased their population by two, so they are up to 10. And now it looks like the blue player is going to do the exact same thing. So they're going to put this one right over here. So that means this will be removed. They can move that ownership token right up there. And they have increased their population by two. Well, we are next, and we are going to put a grand insulae down, but we are not going to be upgrading a regular insulae. Instead, let's do an overbuild right over here, which is going to remove this bakery, as well as all three of these ownership tokens. And just like that, we have increased our population by six. So we go from six all the way up to 12. All right, it's the green player's turn, and they're going to spend two of their money in order to buy C4. After this, the blue player is up, and they have decided to construct the first civic building of the game. Now, this is the Resplendent Library, and they're going to put that right over here. Now, as you can see, this is worth one point per population in buildings adjacent to it, and currently that's six plus four, or ten points. So that is a pretty impactful building right there. Well, we are next, and I think it's time for us to put a civic building down. Now, this is a library, and it's worth one point for every two population in adjacent buildings, so it's half as good as this one, but it's also half the size. Now, I think we should put that one right over here, because currently that is next to, it looks like, 14 population, so that is a seven-point building. Next up, it's the green player's turn, and they have decided they don't like us getting extra points for their insulae, so they are going to do an overbuild right here. So that means this will be removed, this ownership token can go over to C2, and now they have put a foundry right here. Now this does mean that their population just went down by four, but they decided that they were not going to be able to beat us on the track, so losing those points was worth gaining extra money. Well, let's come over here and lower their population down to six. And then it is worth noting that while they did just lose four points worth of population, they have gained five points worth of commercial buildings, and of course the foundry makes three money every time they take income. Well, it's now the blue player's turn, and they're going to buy G1 for just two money. So they can take that and put their token right over here. And after that, it's our turn. Now at this point, we have just one ownership marker out here. So I think what we should do is just buy this cheap plot. Uh, it's only going to cost us two money, and it does put an ownership token right over onto H6, which is not, I suppose, an amazing location, but that could end up being a good spot for a civic building. So we can put this over here, and just like the first round, we took the last of these cards. So that means everyone gets to take one more turn, and the green player gets to go now. And they've decided to place their library right next to ours over here. After that, the blue player can go, and it looks like they are going to be pushing population. Now they're going to overbuild right over here onto their pottery studio so they can remove that token, and they just gained four population. This means they go from 8 up to 12, and they are now tying with us. Now at the end of the round when we score, the person with the most population gets 7 points, and if there's a tie, then both players get it. So it's now our turn, and I think we are pretty much uh, forced into placing one of our Damas buildings. That will increase our population by 1, and of course the blue player saw that we could do this, and they decided to push us in that direction. Of course every population is worth a point, and uh, by placing that out there, they just netted 2 points. Also population is important in the third scoring, so they figured it was a good idea. Well, we have to put this down somewhere, and I think this is probably going to be a better spot than that. I think this will be a better location for the uh, civic buildings, and I was kind of hoping to actually place a civic building down there this turn. In particular, the one I wanted to do was this market, which would give us one point for each coin that it was next to, and there are four coins there. Uh, but I think this was more important, so we're going to go up once on the population track. And with that, round two is officially over. So let's go ahead and score, and we'll start with residences. Now we have won that battle just barely, so we get 7 points as a bonus for the second round. So that means we are going to get 13 plus 7, or 20 points, bringing us up to 27. After that, the blue player is going to get 12 points, which brings them up to 25, and the green player is only going to get 6 points, which takes them up to 18. 
Next up, it is time to score these civic buildings, and it looks like everyone has a single one of those built out at this point. Now, we are going to get one point for every two population next to this library, and that is 6 plus 4, or 10, divided by 2, so we get 5 points. The green player will also get 5 points for that, and then the blue player will get one point for each population next to this resplendent library, and that's going to be 6 plus 4, or 10 points. So green is going to go up to 22, we are going to go up to 32, and blue goes up to 35. Lastly, we have to score the commercial buildings, and we can start by taking money. Now it looks like we have 2 plus 1 or 3 money showing. The green player has 3, 4, 5 money showing over here, and then the blue player has 2, 3, 4. In addition to that, we all get points, so we are going to get 3 points there. The green player is going to get 5, and the blue player is also going to get 5. This means blue is now up to 40 points. We are up to 35, and the green player is up to 27. And that is where the standings rest at the end of the second out of three scorings. So the blue player is being uh, pretty strong at this point. We have now pulled into second place, but considering the player with the most population gets 10 bonus points in the third round of the game, uh, that really means that uh, the green player could catch up. And I'm just hoping that uh, one of the two of us can beat the blue player, who is currently in a very strong position. Well, we can now move into the third and final round of the game, and we of course start by dealing out cards. Well, it's the green player's turn, considering we took the last action in the second round, and they've decided to start things off by buying the lot D5. So they can add this right down over there, and that's going to cost them three money. Next up, we can slide these over, and we can now see F3. Next up, it is the blue player's turn, and they're not in love with pretty much any of these plots, but they also don't have much to do out here on the board, so they're simply going to pay the minimum amount of money, and they'll take F8. After that, these are going to slide down, and now it's time for us to go. Now, I think this turn is pretty simple. We should just buy H3. That's right over here, and it's adjacent to this Domus, and that means we could do an overbuild with one of the Domus Maximuses or something else that we might need in the future. Also, this is just cheap, so I think that is a pretty good move for us. After that, we can slide these down, and the next lot is B2. At this point, it's now the green player's turn, and they've decided to take income. So that's going to be 5 plus 5, or 10 money. Next up, the blue player can go, and they are also going to take income, and that's going to be 5 plus 4, or 9 money. This means it's now our turn, and we could buy one plot, but that spot does not look particularly amazing to me, so I think let's go ahead and take income, just like our opponents did, to try and set ourselves up to be more flexible. So in this case, we're going to take 5 plus 3, or 8 money. Next up, the green player can go, and they have quite a bit of money to their name, and they've decided to spend six of it in order to buy the F3 plot. Uh, this is a pretty important spot for them. They're going to put this right over there, and that's going to finish out their turn. Next up, the blue player can go, and they are simply going to spend two of their money, and that is going to get them the F6 plot. So we can slide these down, and the next card is going to be A3. After that, it is our turn, and I really like the idea of picking up G7. That would let us do an overbuild over here with one of the 2x2 two two buildings, and uh, we could either go with the Foundry or with the uh, Grand Insulae, whichever one makes the most sense at the time. Either way, I think we should buy this so that we can uh, make that decision later, so that is going to cost us 4 of our money, and we can put this right over there. So let's see the next lot, and there really aren't that many left in the deck, only three it looks like. So the green player is up, and they are feeling really fortunate to be able to buy this F4, especially for just two money. That is a really good spot for them, and uh, yeah, they're going to put their token down there. In fact, that is their last ownership token, so at this point they have to start constructing before they can buy more plots. So these are going to slide down now, and next up we can see B7. Next up, the blue player can go, and they have decided to spend 8 of their money, and that lets them purchase the C6. So they can put their token right down over there, and that was pretty expensive, but they did not like a lot of these other plots, and they figured having this next to another one of their tokens is going to be worth it to them to get one of the more powerful buildings out. Okay, it's our turn again, and I think let's buy G3. 
The reason for that is because we then have the opportunity of overbuilding with an angle building right here. And currently both of our angle buildings are out, but we are planning on overbuilding here, which would free this up to then place it right over there. And I think that would be a pretty good move. And we of course do have to spend the money for this. And also uh, considering this is the last card of the round, we should probably start actually constructing these buildings with the plans that we have. Next up, it's the green player's turn and they have decided to build. Now they're going to place this right over here, so that's going to get rid of this bakery as well as two of these ownership tokens, and that has just increased their population by four. So they're going to go from six up to ten. At this point, it's now the blue player's turn, and they're going to take income. So that's going to be five plus four, or nine more money. This means it's now our turn, and I think let's construct our foundry right over here. So that is going to be an overbuild action, so we can put this onto that spot. And now the green player can go. Well, it looks like they've decided to overbuild with their resplendent library over their regular library, so they can pull this back. And that is worth one point per adjacent population. And by putting this here, they have really increased that. So that's four plus four plus six, or 14 points that this building is currently scoring. It's now the blue player's turn, and they are going to spend six of their money in order to buy B7. Now, this is actually the reason they took income last turn, because they really wanted this plot. So these will slide down, and now it's our turn. And I think what we should do is put our artisan forum right over here. Now, I know that's going to remove one of our population, but honestly, the way things are shaking out, I don't think we're going to be able to compete to have the most population anyway. And I'd rather not uh, fight a losing battle. I'd rather try to get points in other ways. And remember, all money you make as part of the third round scoring just turns right into points. So our population is going to go down by one, and then we can place this right over here. Next up, the green player can go, and they are going to spend two of their money to buy B2. After this, it is now the blue player's turn, and they are definitely going to push hard on population. Now, they're going to build this right over here, which means they are overbuilding their resplendent library, and then all of these are going to come back, and that has just increased their population by six. Now, that library was scoring them 10 points, but they have a plan to use this elsewhere. So, their population is going to jump from 12 all the way up to 18. Now the last thing the blue player has to do is put an ownership token right down here because of course that spot was cleared out when they did this overbuild action. Well, at this point it's our turn and we do have four money and I think let's go ahead and spend two of it to buy a two. We don't have too much else to do right now on the map, so getting some more ownership tokens out will give us a couple more build opportunities. I'm hoping that nobody buys a three out from underneath us over here. Well, the green player is up, and they're going to put their library right back down onto the board over here. After this, blue can go, and they have decided to spend four of their money in order to take the A1 plot. After that, it's now time for us to go, and I think let's put our single space market right over here. That's going to give us one point for every coin on buildings adjacent to it, and it looks like there are five coins around here. So five points for a single space building seems like a pretty good deal. Next up, the green player can go, and they're going to put their large market right over here. Now that gets them two points for every coin that it is adjacent to, and currently it is next to four coins, so at the moment it's an eight-point building. Next up, the blue player can go, and they're going to put this building right over here, and that gives them two points for each adjacent civic building, and there are two of them, so that is a four-point building. All right, it's our turn again, and let's definitely buy a three for two money which means green can go now, and they've decided they don't have any super great plays, so they're just going to buy the last plot. Uh, every single location that they own at the end of the game is worth one point, and it also stops their opponents from taking more incrementally better turns. So after that, the blue player gets to take their final action of the game, and they've decided to place a fountain right over here, which is worth one point for each adjacent building. After that, we can take our last action of the game, and I think we're going to put our Resplendent Library right over here. That's worth one point for each adjacent population, and there are six population right here, so that means that's a six-point building. Now, I suppose it is worth noting that the plots themselves were worth one point anyway, so we just netted four points. But uh, either way, I think that was a fine last action for us. So the green player can now take the final action of the game, and they're going to put their fountain right over here, and that's going to give them one point for each adjacent building. 
Well, the round is now over, so it's now time to go into the third and final scoring of the game. Now, the first thing we score is going to be population, and it looks like it was not much of a race there at the end. The blue player was able to push into a pretty sizable lead. Now, in the third scoring, the player with the most population gets 10 extra points. So that means blue is going to get uh, 28 points for that. So they're going to go from 40 up to 68 points. Then we are going to get 12 points, which will bring us up to 47. And then green will get 10, bringing them up to 37. Next up, we can score the civic buildings, and let's go player by player because there are quite a few of them out here. Now, we have three of them on the board. Uh, this larger library is going to give us one point for every adjacent uh, population, which is going to be six. Uh, this small library is one point for every two population, and it's next to ten, so that's a five-point scoring building. And this small market gives us one point for every coin it's next to, and that's going to be five. So that is 16 points total, which brings us from 47 up to 63, and I don't think we scored enough points there. That was not too good. Now next up, the green player can score, and it looks like they have four of these civic buildings out. Now we'll start with this large market, which is two points per coin at their next two, and that is four coins. So that is an eight-point scoring building. This uh, resplendent library is next to 4 plus 4 plus 6, or uh, 14 population, so that's a 14-point scoring building. Obviously, uh, other players are doing a lot better at their scorings than we were. And then up here, this fountain is worth 1 point for each adjacent building, and that is 3. And then this small library is worth 1 point for every 2 population it's next to, and it's next to 10. So that is going to be a 5-point scoring building. All told, the green player made 30 points there, so they're going to go from 37 up to 67. Lastly, the blue player can go, and they just realized they made a big mistake. They were planning on putting their resplendent library back out onto the board right over here, where it would have been next to 6 plus 6 plus 2, or 14 points, but then they just forgot and put a different building out. Uh, so that brain fart is going to cost them a lot of points, it looks like. Well, anyway, they can score the two buildings that they have out. Uh, this fountain is worth four points to them. And then this uh, garden over here is worth two points for each adjacent uh, civic building. And it looks like the green player maybe shouldn't have put this here either. Uh, that gave the blue player two more points. But either way, no one is actually playing this game perfectly here. So that means this uh, garden is going to be worth two for six points. So that means all told, they made 10 points in their civic buildings. So they are going to go up to 78. After this, it's now time to score the commercial buildings. And remember, in this final scoring, you get points instead of money because money is worth nothing at the end of the game. So that means we are going to get 5 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1, which is 14 points total, which will bring us up to 77. Next up, the green player is going to get 5 plus 3 plus 1, or 9 points, which brings them up to 76. And then the blue player is also going to get 9 points. So they're going to go up to 87, and that has finished out the end of round scoring. And now that the game is over, the last thing that we have to score is just one point for every one of these ownership markers that players still have out on the board. Now, all of ours are off the board, but we can see the green player has one, two, three of them, which will bring them to their final score of 79. And then the blue player also has three on the board, so they will go to a final score of 90. And with that, the game is over, and the blue player has a pretty solid win, uh, especially considering they actually kind of dropped 10 points over here on the table. So uh, the blue player uh, certainly won, green came in second, and we were just behind them in third. And that completes one full three-player game of Foundations of Rome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I think overall it did a pretty good job of showing the jockeying back and forth of players trying to get the right plots of land and get the right buildings down at the right moment for all of the scorings. Now, obviously the scores were not super close there at the end. I guess it was more like uh, we were close to green and the blue player was quite a bit ahead. But um, as we were playing, you could definitely see how uh, players are able to uh, take opportunities uh, that their opponents give them. You know, the opponent puts down a really big building. Well, then they, if somebody else wants to put a civic building next to it to try and get points for it, especially once players start locking buildings down by putting those size 4 buildings down, that's really when other players can capitalize on those uh, scoring potentials with the civic buildings. Because, of course, you can only overbuild a building if you have a larger building, and the four size buildings are the biggest. So those uh, do not move for the rest of the game once they are out there on the board. Now, as far as how we all did, um, obviously the blue player did very well. They had a, uh, a nice solid margin of victory, uh, even though they kind of tripped up on their final turn.
third of the game. Um, they put the wrong building down. I just I had a plan to put that uh, really high scoring building down and then just kind of missed it. And they could have had nine more points, but they also kind of cheated throughout the game. Uh, accidentally forgot to lower their population track by two for all three scoring. So they should have had six less points, but in all of these scenarios, the blue player still had a pretty solid win. And uh, that was certainly kind of interesting to see, especially when you factor in um, the fact that the green player had a very uh, solid scoring there in the last round of the game. Uh, of course, they didn't have the most population, but they had a ton of points coming in from their uh, civic buildings. I guess at the end of the day, it was not enough to actually overcome the population bonus that the blue player got. Uh, now, one thing I would like to briefly mention again is the fact that there is another way to do the population scoring. Uh, I mentioned it uh, really quickly in the tutorial video, but instead of just taking one point for every population and having the person with the most uh, get a lump sum of points, instead, the person who has the most population gets one point per population and that lump uh, sum bonus for having the most, but then everyone else gets points equal to the amount of population of the person above them. Now, this would have certainly um, shaken things up a bit. That's why it's an advanced variant, because it involves a lot more uh, interaction between the players, because now you realistically only want just barely enough population to beat your opponents. So having a situation like in this game where the blue player had a huge population advantage, that would actually have been to their disadvantage because obviously they would have been giving more points to the person behind them on the population track, which was us. Um, you just need one more population to get that lump sum bonus. And I think the population uh, contest would be a lot more uh, volatile when you're playing with the advanced variant. And honestly, I'm quite curious to see how that would play out because I think um, that would make uh, putting the population buildings down um, a little bit more dynamic, but also uh, definitely a think your overall process. And obviously the game works just fine without that advanced variant. I just wanted to talk a little bit about it here at the end. So um, yeah, I think at this point, I've now discussed everything I wanted to about this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.